Yeah, and you can see right now I just did VMC apps. Uh, VMC uh, is installed as a, as a uh, Ruby gem. Um, and it actually, you can see here, I can also uh, print out the number of instances. So Webinar ENV has two instances running right now. You can see the services that are bound to these different applications, and you see what URLs they've been posted at. Uh, so we don't even have to add a person because we have a couple um, people in the audience that uh, beat us to it uh, before I even <laughs> refresh the browser page. So you can see that this is a functioning application um, with the uh, ability to view your information. Uh, now we have six people in the application, so uh, pretty soon <laughs> we'll have to add another instance, I guess. Um, Okay, so I guess uh, with that, we can go back to some slides and talk about the architecture um, for 10 or 15 minutes and then have um, uh, some time for Q&A. So let's talk about what's going on inside. So you've seen we de could deploy a very simple application. We could deploy an application that is bound to database. And we saw, in fact, two versions. One is using Spring Roo, another one using uh, Grails, which underneath uses Spring, but uh, a different user experience as far as development is concerned. So what's going on here is let's first focus on uh, router. So when you hit the URL, you are really where going to the router at the top. And the router is the one that is essentially going to pass on the request to an application instance. But where are those application instances? Those are in this what we call DAA, droplet execution agent. And the droplet word comes from, you know, it's a cloud. So cloud does droplets. Uh, so the droplets are the one where, let's say when you said, I want two instances in Hello ENV application. It allocated uh, those two instances on these droplets. And these droplets could be running in single tenant mode where there is one droplet application, or it could be multi tenant as we have right now where multiple applications are running in the same VM, but each application is still running in a separate JVM if it is a Java application. By the way, we also are able to run Ruby and Node.js, and community has contributed Erlang and PHP. So this is a truly a multi-language, multi-platform uh, 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 cloud platform. And people have uh, some some have even run it on uh, AWS and OpenStack. So we are truly open in most. Uh, uh, most possible sense. So now the next, let's focus on cloud controller. When STS was interacting, saying, uh, "Let me push an application," uh, it was. Let's go through this other other. Uh, Mark, can you go back one slide? Sorry. Uh, so when STS was interacting, saying, "I want to uh, start this application, or change number of instances, or bind a service." Uh, it was talking to cloud controller. So is VMC, so is Grails shell. They were all talking to cloud controller. So when you wanted to push an application, you told cloud controller to start a new application. It started that application on droplet execution agent and bound that application's URL, uh, published that URL to router. So router can then serve that application. There is also a manager. So the way it works is, for some reason, let's say your application crashes, um, or we have to move your application from one DA to other DA. Help manager is in charge that says, if you ask me two instances, it will make sure that it will have, or you will always have two instances. Uh, so that's basically where you don't have to babysit the application. It help manager will make sure that your request is always, your uh, expected state is always there. We also have services. So service, uh, there is a provisioning agent. So when you said, I want to create a MySQL service, the service agent talked to the service, created um, an instance of service, uh, created the right credentials, and gave it to the cloud controller, which in turn will give it to the application. Next slide. So this is sort of a more uh, 
logical view. So logical view is all the clients talk to cloud controller, browser talks to router, uh, and then through that user application, users apps run on droplet execution agent, and health manager monitors router, cloud controller, DA, etc. And it all runs on infrastructure, a virtualized infrastructure. Next slide. So we'll we'll skip this one because we kind of uh, the router we talked about what router does and router also acts as a load balancer. So one more point to make is that's why you saw when uh, Mark was refreshing the Hello ENV applications URL, it was going to different uh, hosts. So uh, router does a job at essentially fairly distributing load across all available instances. Cloud controller is uh, where you control your application and you could talk to it yourself if you want. So you can write your own clients or even your applications can talk to uh, manage other applications, let's say. The next component is, uh, Mark. is droplet execution agent and droplet execution agent essentially is um, in charge of running one or more applications so that could be multi tenant or uh, single tenant but in case of java as i mentioned earlier there is a separate jvm and tomcat for application and each application instance so uh, you're not really essentially uh, you won't suffer too much from uh, noisy neighbor uh, issues they also have make sure that it's a secure so your application cannot talk to other applications except through normal means. Um, next. Services is where uh, it, it's one of those extensibility planes. So let's say uh, you are deploying cloud to your own data center. You can add any other services that you want. So let's say if you want to deploy, uh, if, you're, if you want to use CouchDB, you can write CouchDB provi uh, provider, and the CouchDB provider can be consumed by then applications. Uh, services can, may be shared across applications. So when Mark did create a MySQL service and he bound to an application, he could bind the same service to multiple applications, and vice versa. You can have multiple services bound to same application. That way, for example, if there is an e-commerce application, uh, a front-facing application could talk to the same inventory database as, let's say, uh, a back-end application managing inventory. Cloud Foundry completely abstracts provisioning aspect of service. So the services are made available, provisioned and made available to your application in essentially identical manner. And all the information available to talk to the services is exposed through environment, very similar to what Mark showed when you could get application instance info, you could get service info. And we, of course, have a layer that makes it even simpler. So you can simply say, create me a data source based on this service. Uh, next slide. Uh, Mark, you want to take this one? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, there's a lot of Places you can go to find more information. Uh, obviously, cloudfoundry.org is um, the, the real starting point. That's where you can find access to the Git repository. You can uh, clone that Git repository for yourself. There's a README there that describes how to build your own um, local cloud and run it on a uh, virtual machine. Um, and obviously, that's also where you can sign up for an account so that you can deploy your applications on cloudfoundry.com. So there's, there's basically a link to cloudfoundry.com from cloudfoundry.org. On the spring side, uh, we've been doing a lot of blogging, and we'll continue to be um, blogging about the Cloud Foundry experience for spring developers. Uh, one of the things that's, that's interesting about um, the, the, this environment is that it opens up a lot of opportunities that developers um, that maybe weren't as easy for developers um, <clears throat> earlier. So for instance, since Cloud Foundry is multi-platform, 
you can have Ruby applications, you can have Node.js applications in addition to your Java applications. So you might have a Spring Java application, but also a Node application that's related to it in some way, and they need to share data. Well, there's a number of options that you have for sharing data. If you just need to use a simple document data store, you can bind both applications to Mongo. If you need to use a key value store, you can bind both applications to Redis. And if you need a relational database, then of course you can bind both applications to the MySQL instance. If you need to do messaging, you can bind both applications to RabbitMQ and use the AMQP client libraries for the, the languages on either side. So this is, this is a really interesting um, direction, being able to go into the applications um, on different platforms and share these services since all of these services are open. Now, um, we do have a number of applications actually running. If you look at, uh, so let me just point out these, um, these links. If you go to blog.springsource.com, there's actually a Cloud Foundry uh, category now. So you can scroll down to the, um, the various tags that are available and you can choose Cloud Foundry. You'll see we have seven blogs so far. We're going to be adding a few more over the coming weeks. Uh, a lot of these are walking through sample applications. Um, so for instance, uh, John Brisbane just recently wrote an article that's uh, been getting rave reviews here. Uh, using MongoDB and Redis, between an application that's built in Spring ABC on one side and Node.js on the other. So you can actually uh, send data between the Spring app and the Node app easily through these shared services. Um, most of these applications uh, you'll see when you go to the blogs, but most of them are available in the uh, Git repository, um, Spring Sources Git repository on GitHub. So if you go to github.com Spring Source, Cloud Foundry dash samples, you'll see a lot of these applications there. Uh, I just want to point out one other application because I think it's particularly interesting for Spring users is this Node Spring Flex Chat. Similar to John's application, it uses uh, Node on one end and Spring on the other, but this one actually takes things quite a bit further. The Spring application, uh, at least on the Spring application side, it's using the Spring Blaze DS integration project under the covers, the Spring Blaze DS integration project is using the Spring integration uh, messaging adapters, and it's in particular using a, a brand new adapter that's still in the sandbox that is for doing PubSub over Redis. So what that means is that the Flex front end is actually a chat whose destination is directly tied to a Redis PubSub channel, and the Node application is using a um, Redis client in JavaScript to be able to communicate with that same Redis instance. Uh, so it's actually a nice example of a chat application, but what I wanted to point out is that it, it's, it shows you that as a Spring developer, you have all of the same uh, frameworks and APIs available to you. There's no restriction in terms of what you can run on Cloud Foundry. Um, in fact, we're adding more and more support for these types of applications with things like the Spring Data Project and other adapters that we're adding in Spring integration. Uh, so you'll see more and more of these applications and more and more of these blogs um, getting into uh, this more modern style of application where you have different platforms and different um, services. So I guess now we can do some QA. I already see uh, some questions. Uh, so we can uh, take uh, questions and if you have more questions, please type it in uh, the webinar. So first question is from Andrew. Uh, Rubalka, if uh, hopefully uh, saying it right, could you deploy a GWT application or Flex application to Cloud Foundry? So Mark already answered the Flex related application. Yes, you can. Uh, GWT application, absolutely you can. Uh, in fact, we have a few applications already deployed. Uh, just to make a general point here from Java perspective, if it is a web application, so if you have a war, then you should be able to deploy the application more or less as is. Uh, obviously, if your application is hard coding, let's say database URL or other places in your code, you will have to modify those things. But other than that, most applications, you should be able to take it to cloud pretty straightforward. 